everyone, my name is Kelly. I'm a third year medical student and I'm really excited to talk to you today about the embryology of the human ear. So we're going to go ahead and get started with an overview of the adult human ear. So the adult ear is made up of three parts. Shown here in orange is the outer part, which is made up of the pinna and the external auditory meatus. The middle ear, which is made up of the three middle ear bones, the incus, malleus, and stapes, as well as the tympanic cavity. And then the inner ear, which is shown here in gold, which is made up of the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus. The inner ear has origins in the ectoderm of the neural tube, where the middle ear and the outer ear have origins in the corneal apparatus. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the development of the inner ear because that's actually the first thing to form in the embryo. So in the picture here on the upper left, you can see here is a image of the embryonic neural tube. And in late week three, the, ec the surface ectoderm thickens and forms what's called the otic placode. And this is forming on the myelencephalon, which is the most caudal part of the neural tube. So this thickens and then invaginates and pinches off to form the otic vesicle. Now to get a better idea of this, we're going to cut the neural tube right here. And now we're going to look cranially. And this brings us to the picture here on the right. You can see here that the otic vesicle is made up of surface ectoderm, but has invaginated itself into the neural tube. So now we're going to rotate again, and we're going to be looking medially from the outside at this otic vesicle. And that brings us to the picture here at the bottom. So the otic vesicle is made up of two parts. It has the utricular part, which is more superior, and it has the saccular part that's more inferior. So the utricular part develops into the adult semicircular ducts, and this begins as three disc-like structures that are that develop and then reabsorb in the center to form what we know as the adult semicircular duct. Now the more inferior part, the saccular part, grows and er, sorry, elongates and coils simultaneously. And this is what forms the adult cochlea. And what's really unique about this embryonic development is that as it's growing, it's also coiling at the same time. And in the adult structure, on average, it's about 2.75 turns that make up the adult cochlea. So the entire inner ear is completed around 20 to 22 weeks of development and is then its final adult size. So the middle and outer ear, moving on, it has origins in the pharyngeal apparatus. So this begs a review of the pharyngeal apparatus itself. So the pharyngeal apparatus is made up of arches, pouches, clefts, and membranes. Pharyngeal arches are made up of cartilage, an artery, an associated cranial nerve, as well as muscle. The clefts are the ectoderm that separates the, the arches. The pouches are the endoderm that separate the arches. And the membranes are the endoderm, mesenchyme, and ectoderm that separate the arches. So the middle ear has origins in both the first and the second pharyngeal arch. The first pharyngeal arch begets the adult malleus and incus. And the second pharyngeal arch mesenchyme begets the stapes. So meanwhile, the tubotympanic recess, which is made up of the, um, the first pharyngeal membrane, is elongating and growing superiorly, and it then envelops these three middle ear bones. And this forms the adult tympanic cavity and forms also the inner part of the adult tympanic membrane. So we're now going to move on to talk about the, um, the external ear um, 
because this actually completes our discussion of the component number itself. So beginning with the bottom picture here, the meato plug is actually a thickening in the ectoderm of the first pharyngeal pus that then hollows out and um, forms the external acoustic meato. You can see here that it um, contributes to the tympanic membrane, and this is then the structure is finalized. Now the, the pinna of the adult ear has origins in what's called auricular glock. Now these are formed in both the first and the second pharyngeal arches, and fortunately they are named for their adult structures. Auricular glock 1 is called the tragus, 2 is called the helix, 3 is called the cymba conca, 4 is called the antitragus, Five is called the antihelix, and six is called the conca. And as these develop, you can see them form the adult structures of the pinna. So this completes our discussion on embryonic development of the ear, and I just want to mention a brief word on some congenital ear malformations. So wall inheritance of a recessive trait is the most common cause of congenital deafness. A uh, a late term rubella virus infection is also a, a, a large cause of pediatric hearing loss. Additionally, although syndromic hearing loss is not, it's, is not as common, there are more than 300 genetic syndromes that have hearing loss as a component. Therefore, what this is really saying is if you have hearing loss, you don't necessarily have to look for a syndrome, but if you have a syndrome, you might want to consider hearing loss to be part of it, and so you might want to test hearing. So this brings my presentation to a close, and thank you so much for listening, and a huge thanks to the UW Department of Otolaryngology for both the support and the inspiration for making this presentation.